Hey guys, welcome back to another uh, coding session on my own tutor. So I want to get this out of the way really quick. This will be the last video I make on um, creating this API in this series. And the reason for that is just I need to get this moving and um, I think now I've made this particular video that I'm about to go over six times because every single time I just haven't really liked how it came out and that's you know that's probably a good four or five hours that I could have just spent like oh okay you know so <clears throat> um, for this tutorial series this is where this ends but I will say that I'm still going to make different um, videos on different topics they just won't be in relation to this specific series so let's get started uh, today we're going to be focusing on some refactoring and the reason that I want to refactor this code is that while it does technically work it's not very um, it's not very test friendly and I don't think it's very uh, Enter, not enterprise, but I don't think it's very production friendly. And the reason that I don't think it's friendly is mainly because, so <clears throat> it's, I'll just explain it because that's going to be easier. Um, here we have user DB tests. This is, that's the file we're in right now. And with this, we almost have to write some kind of integration test because we're touching the database itself there's really no way for us to not have to connect to the database so that's where you constantly see me invoking these two functions create dummy user destroy dummy user because we are actually testing a real live connection but if I were to uh, disconnect from the internet all of these tests would start to fail unless I mean unless you're connected to localhost then they might work still um, if you have one I think you have to write 127.0.0.1 in you can't use like localhost to do that but <clears throat> nonetheless if this were like an actual production um, code base if I disconnected from the internet all of these tests fail and another thing that can happen is let's say that two developers happen to run these tests at just the right moment um, we might find we might have a case where both of these dummy user or where this dummy user is created by developer number one and then developer number two's tests try to run and they can't create this dummy user because the username is already taken or the email is already taken and in that case you're gonna have some of these tests fail some of the time and those are the hardest bugs to actually figure out is when you have some tests fail some of the time but like I said with the user DB test suite we really have no choice but to touch the database so I'm not too concerned with this I am however concerned with the user test JS file and the reason I'm concerned with this is that this user test JS file is testing out our user service file it's not testing out our user database file remember that the user service file never actually touches the database only the user DB file touches the database so we shouldn't have a situation where the user service requires the um, user DB file to work in order to work and the reason that this is happening is because we've if we look in our user service um, file we see here that we've kind of really coupled um, we've kind of really coupled this file to uh, the user DB file by doing this and I see this happen a lot in different um, tutorials where people will just write oh we're just gonna require these files in I think sometimes the require 
uh, the require, pr not property module, is that the right word? I think sometimes require is overused in Node.js. Um, and I really don't want, like seeing this here. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this file so it actually doesn't require in any of these things. And instead, we're going to inject these functions into these um, these functions. We're going to inject these functions into these functions uh, as parameters so that then in our user test file, we are no longer going to need to create a dummy user. Instead, we're just going to pass in some kind of mock data and we'll um, pass in something that basically replaces this with a function that we have control of at the time. And in doing so, we'll make it much more unit testable because this really isn't a unit test. Let's think about all the things that we have to touch to get this function or this test to actually pass. First, we have to touch the actual database to create a test user. Then, when we actually want to test out this function, right, we have to also, we're basically also hoping that this function is doing what it's supposed to do and that this function is doing what it's supposed to do. And if either one of these doesn't return correctly, then it's going to cause this test to fail. Meaning that this test is actually testing out like four different things. And the whole purpose of a unit test is to test out a singular unit. It should really only be testing this validate user exists function. So right now we have our API gateway that requires in this user service that then requires in this user database handler. And we don't want to do that because basically we're tying all three of these together. Instead, what we want to do is if we have any dependencies, because the user database handler is basically a dependency that the user service uses, um, we want to inject that user DB handler into the user service. We don't want this to be hard coded into the user service the way we have it now. In the same way, we might have, let's say that we have a database right here. So we have our user database and we don't want this to be flowing directly in, ooh, let's see here, can I actually do arrows? We don't want this to be happening, and this is actually what we have happening right now. Instead, we want this to be happening, so it gets put into the um, API gateway. So all these arrows should be flowing into the API gateway, and this is like a spider sitting on a web that's just piecing everything together frantically. Um, but yeah, all of these things flow into the API gateway and it decides where to put them and how they should be placed. And I'll show you how we can do this right now. So in our code, we're, right now we're in the user DB code. And just a forewarning, um, everything we're about to do is basically going to obliterate our testing suite that we have set up at the moment. It won't invalidate the tests in the, such a way that um, the logic inside them doesn't work. We're just going to be changing some names around that in such a way that they will just no longer work. So let's, in our user DB, what we want to do here, if we, so what we want to do in our user DB is basically like I said, at the moment, our user DB is connected to our database like this. Our user database requires in this database. And we want to break that connection so that the database is no longer required in by our user database handler file. 
So the way that we can do this, and you can do this either with classes or with pure functions, is to return something that allows you to use closures. So first let's minimize all of this stuff and I'm going to take this validate permission ID and I'm going to move it underneath um, the module.exports and then I'm going to grab all of this code up here and I'm going to cut that out and like I said you can do this with classes or you can do this with functions so uh, let me show you real quick how you would accomplish this with a class. If you were doing something with a class, oh, and by the way, I just deleted all of these from module.exports. So if you were doing this with a class, you might say something like module.exports equals class user db handler um, and then something like this and then we could do a constructor constructor pass in whatever variables we need to so do set up here and then under here we would paste our um, functions and with classes we don't use the function keyword so we would do something like this and now whenever we call an instance of the user DB handler we're going to have access to all of these methods if we did for example pass a database through into here then we could say something like this dot DB equals DB and then any instance of our class handler that we passed in a DB to when we created it now has access to this database. But again, that's classes, and we're not going to do it with classes. I'm going to do it with just functions. So what we can do with functions is we want to return a function which returns an object. So we'll say module.exports equals this, and then we're going to say it returns an object like that and then paste all of this in there. <clears throat> so now when we call this we're going to pass in a DB object right here okay and that means that now all of these functions are going to have access to this DB object. Okay, so what we'll want to do here is we'll take these and we need to move them over here like that and then add our commas. So let's real quick just add a bunch of commas here and then we're going to exit that. And I hope that it's clear what I'm doing. If not, I will walk through how this all executes when we are done. Okay, so now we have this module.exports, which is now a function, right? And it has this DB object, and it's going to return an object, which is going to have access to that database object. So let's say for username exists, for example, instead of calling this DB object up here, database, let's see if I can find one, there it is. This is actually referring to the database object that we passed in. So guess what I can do? I can get rid of this. Okay, and then I wanna take this and I want to put that in here. Alright, that's all we need to do for the user DB. Now for the user service, we're going to do something called, we're going to create something called factory functions. So I don't want to be doing any of this anymore because we don't, these aren't actually being exported from that. So we can just get rid of that. Like, they don't exist any longer. Um, so we can't use them, obviously. 
The next thing we'll want to do is create some factory functions. If you're not familiar with the word factory functions, a factory function is a design principle where you create a function that returns a, another function or object um, that, well, it doesn't just return it, it composes it and then it returns it usually. <clears throat> so let, uh, let me show you an example of one and it will be much clearer. So let's create a factory function for validate user exists. First, we're going to take all of this logic and cut it out of user exists or validate user exists. And then up here, we're going to write async. Doesn't need to be async actually. Function. And we will say validate user exists factory and this is going to take in a dependency I'm just gonna write that actually out here so it's very clear for you guys so this is gonna take in some kind of dependencies Ooh, I like that okay and then it's going to return a function it's gonna return an asynchronous function async function and this is going, that'll take in some kind of arguments. I'll talk about that in a second. And then we're going to paste all of the code we just copied right out of there. Okay, so quick note, you can do this in ES6 arrow functions. WebStorm just freaked out when I tried doing it. That was one of the reasons I had to start over the video because I couldn't figure out why it was saying, this is wrong. And I'm like, no, it's not. But you can do this in ES6 arrow functions. WebStorm just won't let me. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at what's going on here. First off, we have this dependency thing that's being used. And what is that? Well, we just got rid of all of those user DB functions at the top that we had required in previously. And that's because they don't exist anymore. But our user DB is actually exporting something. It's exporting a function. Uh, ooh, what happened? What did it ha oh, okay. <laughs> it's exporting a function which exports a, another, or it's exporting a function which exports an object, right? So in our API gateway, we're going to essentially call this and assign it to something so that it can then be passed in. Because remember, now that we've disconnected our database from our user DB, the gateway is what's responsible for it. And the same thing is true of the user service. Now that we've disconnected our user DB from our user service, the API gateway is going to be responsible for it. So when it comes to this factory function in user service, our dependency is going to be whatever the heck um, the U API gateway shoves in there. Now, for clarity's sake, we can actually call it something that makes sense. So let's just say user DB. And now this username exists and this email exists are going to be properties of that um, object that gets returned from the user DB function that gets called. So in our user service, we would say user db what's going on where'd my cursor go okay Woo, what's happening user db dot okay because these are both going to be properties of whatever that user db object is that we pass in as a dependency now, you might be noticing that we see these squiggly lines underneath username and email. The only purpose of the factory is to return a function. So when you see something like this, function return async function, this is where closures become really important in JavaScript. When we call this function, right? So let's say that we write a line of code that's const validate user equals validate user exists factory and then we pass in some kind of dependency I spot that wrong but oh well and we pass in some kind of dependency all this is going to do is assign this function that we see right here to validate user it 
does not call it. It just assigns it to something. So instead of, so when we call it again, we need to then pass in the arguments that it requires. So we're going to say username and email. And again, if you're having trouble, I really do urge you just stick around until you see me actually execute this with insomnia. It will make so much more sense if you're not understanding what I'm all doing. So now we have this factory that's going to return a function and our dependencies are all going to be in there. So we're good to go there. Okay, now let's do that for all of our other uh, functions we have here. So we'll say function and create user factory and then this is going to take in user db and we're going to return an async function with args passed in and that asynchronous function is going to do this and create user is going to be a property of user db. All right, we can delete that. Next, we'll do the user search factory. So we'll say function user search factory. And this is going to also take in a user db and it's going to return an async function which takes in a credential and we will return this find user with the credential except we will do it by the user db now you might have noticed something here and that is that each one of these factory functions takes in the user db. So we could have done almost exactly what we did here, where instead of exporting individual functions um, like we're doing here, oop, user service, like we're doing here, we could have just wrapped them all in a single function, which returns an object and injected the user db. Either one works. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, in fact, I've heard some people say that this is probably better though because it exposes the um, dependencies that you might have better than this does. Uh, this Because right now, we actually don't know how many... we. I can say because there's so few functions in here that every single one of these relies on this database, database object. But as this file grows, all of these may not rely on the database object anymore. And that sometimes means that you have functions that have things in scope that shouldn't be in scope. It's, it really is, it depends on how you're doing things and what your use case is. There's only three functions in this file and some of them are quite small. So I'm gonna leave them as independent functions for the moment. So then we'll down here, let's do those. So we'll say validate user exists factory. There it is. Create, oh, oh dear. I deleted it all, okay. <laughs> create user exists fact, or create user factory and user search factory. All right, so now all of those are being exported from there, right? Now, the next thing that we need to do then is the gateway itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is require in our databases. Because remember, we're no longer requiring our database in here. We're expecting it to have be passed when this function is called. So in our user gateway, Let's mark off a little comment here and we'll say 
databases because eventually we may have more than one database. Not likely, but it is possible. So we'll say const and then uh, db equals require models. All right, so now we have access to this database object. <coughs> we have our user object from the services. We also want to get our user database. So const user underscore db equals require, and then let's say services, users, and user db. Okay, so now our user DB is equal to this function. Okay, so what we'll probably want to do then is run. So let's actually, I don't know, hmm. I don't know what to call this. Um, const user handler, database handler, db handler, handler equals user db, and we just seen right there, this takes in a database, so we would actually pass in this up here, so to make that really clear, let's move that. To up here okay I don't like that user DB handler name and I might come up with something different for it later on but that's what it is for the moment so now if we were to run this we would see that user DB handler is going to be equal to an it's an object and it's going to have all of the properties that we specified here with the specific database that we passed into it. And for those of you who are saying right now that seems really overly complicated, again, I would greatly ask you to appreciate what happens if we have multiple databases or if we don't want to pass in the database for something, say, like testing, and we just want to pass in some fake data. Um, We've severely, we have, we've hacked, we've cut, we've chipped away. This database is no longer um, coupled to this in any which way possible. It's just not. It's not coupled there anymore. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. There is one coupling in that this database is still requiring that whatever passed in here be a SQLized object. Okay. So now we have that. And we still have our user object from our user services. So let's go into our post for users, creating a new user. And let's minimize, we've minimized that, okay. So here's where we're forwarding something to the user service, right? And it's already telling us that this user.validate user exists, doesn't exist. So what we wanna do is recreate this. We're going to say const validate user exists is equal okay to user dot create or sorry validate user exists factory and then this takes in a user database and we called that our user db handler Now we have access to, now we have a new function that we just created called our validate user exists that we normally used right here. So we'll get rid of everything there. And now we can say const found user equals await validate user exists username. Okay. And then finally down here, we'll say instead of this, we'll, uh, we will say, const create 
new user equals, and then we'll say user dot create user factory, pass in our uh, user DB handler, and now we can get rid of this user here because we have this new function right there. Whoop. And voila, that is a, that's how dependency injection works. Um, and yes, you are definitely adding overhead, or not overhead, adding more code in the sense that, you know, where we once had one line of code, now we have two because we have to create this new, we have to create this factory and then use it. Um, you could actually take these out of um, here though. So actually let's do that. We can, not, on, not only can we do that, we can take these out. So let's say for this entire, um, this entire file, create new user, this function, okay, is the same in all of these routes. So what we can do is we can actually take this line out of here. I didn't do this because if you put it all the way at the top, um, it can become harder to know where this function is coming from. But you can actually take this line and move it all the way up to here if you want. So that this file is creating these global um, variables to this file at least <clears throat> that say hey this is the function I want but the main part the main point is that in this instance our user gateway the API gateway that we're using is now the dude that's responsible for creating all of these functions and it's managing and handling all of the dependencies so that these guys really or, sorry that this doesn't really have to worry about that okay so let's actually see how this works now so that I can prove to you that this is not insane. Because the first time I showed this to someone, they were just like horrified that I was doing all of this rerouting. Let's see here. So here we have a post to, whoop, let's let that play. And let's create our breakpoint. Okay, I have a breakpoint. So here we have a post route to localhost 5000 because uh, I just have the server running and then user. And I'm going to send through all of this information. So if we send this through, it's going to break. Okay. So first thing I want to show you is, well, what is this validate user exist? It's undefined. But if we look at user, dot validate user exists factory we're seeing that this is a function so let's go into there and let's put a breakpoint at line number um, five okay so and then we'll also put a breakpoint right at 71 so if I hit play assuming that I didn't type anything incorrectly okay we're now inside validate user exists factory and this factory has had a user DB object passed into it. And look at that. We have a user DB object with create user, email exists, find user, and username exists. Now it's going to return this asynchronous function called, it's an anonymous function, and it's going to require that it have a username and email passed into it. So let's hit play again. Okay, so now we're at line 71 and we see that validate user exists is equal to an anonymous function that requires a username and an email. Awesome. So now we're going to call this function with my username testing123 and my email k at test.com that I passed in. And then we'll put a line here at 72. And we will put a line here at line six. We'll hit play. Okay, I was unsure if it would actually, 
allow us to break here any longer because um, it was an anonymous function. That is one thing that makes this a little bit more difficult is because this is returning an anonymous function, um, you can no longer break inside of it. But uh, nonetheless, found user returned null. Okay, because of this user doesn't exist. I know this user doesn't exist. So if username is not, or so if username is not equal to, so both of these are going to work out. Let's skip down to line 77 now. Okay, now we're going to call create user factory with our DB handler. And we see here that our DB handler is equal to all of this. Now this is going to call create user. So what I want to do is I'm hoping that we'll still be able to see this. Let's go into our user DB. and down to create new user and put a little line of code, a breakpoint there. All right, and then let's also put a breakpoint here at line 78. So we now see, as soon as it actually gets there, that create user is now equal to an anonymous function again, which takes in this args, okay? And I'm hoping that we'll be able to see it hit Maybe not. Yes, we did. Awesome. All right. So now I want you to see, look at this. We, our DB object does exist, even though we never actually required it at the top of this file. And the reason that the database object exists is because of closures. Because remember that when we did, where is it? Let me find it. This. Okay, when we pass in our user, our database into this user DB object, which is being hit right here, and it returns all of this, JavaScript is basically saying, hey, this database object is being returned along with all of this function. So I need to kind of put that database object into a little backpack and store it away for later um, when these functions are used. So um, even though we aren't requiring this database object at the top of this file anymore, because we invoked this whole return with the database object, as long as that invocation exists, the database object will persist inside of it. <clears throat> So now it can go through all of this logic and you see that the args being passed are all the arguments that we had set except for this permission ID. So it's going to validate and do everything that it can. So um, let's talk about that for a second before we hit play. Remember I said that when we call create user factory, all it does is return a function to us. So create user factory is returning this function right here and this function has an arguments parameter so when we call whatever we assigned create user or create user factory to which in this case is create new user we need to call it with the same arguments that were returned as the function that this returned, okay? And then we can let this play out and let it do its thing. It's gonna stop now. It's, um, we're not gonna get a response because we, that, uh, Insomnia doesn't wait that long for a response. That was basically Insomnia saying, hey, I waited forever, nothing actually happened. So, uh, you know, nothing happened but we actually did create a user. So if I send this through again, let's make sure we have a breakpoint before it can be like, uh-uh. Okay, 
so I have a breakpoint at validation. So if we send this through again now, okay, and we find validate exists. So let's go into here. I think I just need to put that breakpoint in there before it has the chance to run. Okay, so. All right, so now we see that it's calling this function, username is equal to testing, email is equal to testing, and let's do a line at 16 because one of these should be found, both of them should be found. All right, so we have, mm, no, this is no, that is no, as in it didn't find it? Well, this is interesting. User gateway, user database. Does it ever actually call this? Let's get some of these breakpoints out of the way so that I can see what's happening. Found user is equal to no db is not defined validate permission id oh okay validate permission id relies on database so Let's do this async function. All right, so here's something that has happened here, and that is that this dude is actually relying on a database. What we can do, uh, we could move this into here, but then it exposes it to out there. Um, but for testing purposes, we would still want this to uh, yeah okay so I'm going to move it inside of there so that it has access to the database object this is a, yet again another reason why some people will argue um, that you should do it like th this where each of them takes in its own dependencies uh, so let's see. Oh, but then I'm gonna have to change it to this dot. Okay, so I'm actually not going to do that. So Z. Uh, for this function, we are going to just allow so const db equals require models. Up one more. Okay. <clears throat> this, but like I said, this would be an argument as to why each function needs its own um, dependencies. So let's let this run again. I don't think I have any breakpoint. Couldn't connect to the server. What do you mean couldn't connect to the server? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And run one more time, please. Seriously? What's going on? Did it hit a breakpoint? Okay, so if found user, it shouldn't have found a user. Let's let it go through here. I think I have one more breakpoint. Yep. All right. Let that do its thing. And we get our new user in return. So obviously now, if I send it through again, found user will be true. Yay, look at that. And you do, 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 do. So it's gonna send me back. Oh, 
the first one, username testing was already taken. And that is how we do dependency injection. I want to say it's been very, very nice going through all of this with you guys. And if I weren't making this out into its own thing, I would 100% keep going. Um, like I said, I'm still going to keep making tutorials on both Node.js. I have a bunch of React tutorials coming up. So if you're looking forward to those, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like so more people maybe see it. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. You said that you needed me Like a cargo